Hi folks, this is Joe with Gen 5 Runner. In this video, you'll learn three topics you need to thoroughly understand to get the most power out of your winch. You'll learn about how the amount of cable that you have out affects how much power your winch can produce. You'll learn how to set up anchors that can support the power of your winch. And you'll learn how to get the most power in a single line pull and how to employ snatch blocks to multiply your winch's power. This is not a video about winching safety or winching techniques. There are many, many very good videos about that on YouTube, and I recommend that you watch them all. This is a video about the mechanics involved in using your winch. Oh, and since subscriptions are what makes this channel possible, please subscribe now. Let's start with a discussion of the pulling power of your winch. The drawing at top shows a winch end on with almost all of the cable deployed. The drawing at the bottom shows a winch end on with almost all of the cable wound up on the spool. The first principle we need to understand here is that the amount of force that your winch motor can apply to the rotor is essentially constant. The second principle is that as you add layers of cable to your rotor, the distance between the center of the rotor and the cable increases. The final principle we need to understand is that this distance, or radius, acts like a lever. The longer that lever becomes, the less tension or pulling force your winch motor can produce in your cable. I'm going to do a little arithmetic here to help illustrate what's going on, but as you'll see, you do not need a calculator to use your winch. I want to emphasize here that these are not numbers that you should try to calculate for your winch. If you need real world values, they should be measured, not calculated. Fortunately, most of the winch manufacturers have already done this for you. If you contact them, they can usually tell you what the tension in your line would be based on the number of layers that you have wound onto your spool. If we have a 10,000 pound winch and most of the cables spooled out so that that radius is one inch, then you can see that we get 10,000 pounds of pulling power. However, as we roll up the line and get closer to the anchor, let's suppose it becomes four inches of radius. In that case, the pulling power reduces from 10,000 pounds down to just 2,500 pounds. So, what we need to understand about winch power is that it's related to how much cable is on the spool. The more layers of cable you have wound on the winch, the less the pulling power can be. The second topic you need to understand is how to set up and evaluate anchor points to support the power of your winch. Whether your anchor is a short strap around a large tree or using multiple elements or multiple trees like in this picture, you need to pay close attention to the angles that are formed by the different elements of your anchor system. In our example, the T represents the tension in the straps around the trees, and the F represents the force of pull from the winch. I'm not going to bore you with all the arithmetic to do this, but simply show you a table that explains what the relationship is between that tension, T, and the angle between our straps around the trees. If the straps are really long so that they're essentially parallel to each other, that angle is zero and each strap carries one half or 50% of the load from the winch line. So for our 10,000 pound winch, that would be 5,000 pounds of tension in each strap. As this sharp angle increases, say up to 60 degrees, things don't change a whole lot, only 8%. So at a 60 degree angle, each strap would be carrying 5,800 pounds from our 10,000 pound winch. But from there, things start to change pretty quickly. When we get up to 120 degrees, each strap is carrying 100% of the load, or 10,000 pounds in each strap. Above 120 degrees, the tension in the straps is actually greater than the force of pull from the winch. So at 152 degrees, the tension in our strap is 206% of the pulling of the winch, or at 10,000 pounds, that would be 20,600 pounds in each strap. Unnecessary extreme tension like this can cause the anchors themselves to fail or for the straps to part and send your shackles flying back at your vehicle. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I usually don't carry a protractor around with me to measure these sorts of things. So here's a simple way to check the angle. Think of a clock. The angle between any two hours is 30 degrees. And from there, you can put together the others. So let's apply what we just learned to the example that we began with. The marked angle there looks to me to be about 120 degrees, which means each side would be carrying 100% of the pull of a, our 10,000 pound winch or 10,000 pounds on each side. But that is not the whole story. You see, each tree has a strap wrapped around it, and that strap comes together at the anchor point to the winch line. That strap makes an angle of, oh, what looks like about 30 degrees or 52%. So instead of carrying 10,000 pounds tension, it's 5,200 pounds tension in each side of that strap. We use multiple anchor points to spread the load out and increase the security of our anchor system. But in this case, each tree is still carrying 10,000 pounds. It's no better than having hooked the winch directly to just one of the two trees. The important thing to learn from all of this is you want to keep that angle less than 90 degrees and ideally less than 60 degrees. Let's look at estimating how much power we're actually applying to our vehicle. In the simple example illustrated here, we're pulling in a straight line with a winching force of let's say 10,000 pounds. The tree is holding that 10,000 pounds and the vehicle is receiving a pulling force of 10,000 pounds. In this scenario, the only way to increase winching power is to pull more layers of cable off of the winch. When employing snatch blocks in your winching system, the most important thing to keep in mind is that the tension in your winch cable is the same everywhere. In this example, the winch is producing a tension F in the winch cable. The cable is then rerouted through a snatch block and brought back to the front of the vehicle. Since the tension in the winch cable is the same everywhere, the snatch block is being pulled twice for a force of 2F, which in turn means that the tree or anchor is supporting a total force of 2F. Our rig is also experiencing two tensions or a total of 2F. So if we have a winch pulling 10,000 pounds. That means we're putting 20,000 pounds of pressure on the anchor and pulling the vehicle with 20,000 pounds of force. Now, I know that sounds like a ridiculous amount of force to pull with just to get yourself out of a mud hole, but I want you to think about what if most of the line was still on the winch and you're really only capable of pulling 2,500 pounds. Well, now you're getting to 5,000 pounds, plus you're pulling out twice as much line in order to do your winching, which is gonna improve the mechanical efficiency of your winch itself. Take a look at this next system employing two snatch blocks. See if you can figure out, one, how much force is pulling on the vehicle, and two, how much force is pulling on each tree. Don't forget, the tension in the winch cable is the same everywhere. And here's the answer. Just a quick review of what I hope you learned. One, the more cable that's on your wrench, the less power your winch can produce. Two, when setting up anchor systems, you always want to keep the angle between any two straps less than 90 degrees and ideally less than 60. And three, the tension in your winch cable is the same everywhere. Just figure out how many times it touches something and you'll know how much force is being applied. Subscriptions are what make this channel possible, so please show your support for us by clicking on subscribe. Until next time, this is Joe with Gen 5 Runner, hoping you always arrive safe and leave clean. Cheers.